is time for Stevens A list, a special edition of the Stevens A list because I got my man Ryan Clark. This list is especially for you, my top five teams in the country. Number five, Alabama at number five. You know why? Because Nick Saban is the real deal. He doesn't wait. He doesn't waste any time. He stays on guys, keeps them motivated. He doesn't play. That's number five. My number four team on the list, Alabama. <laughs> Why are they number four? Because my man, Tua Tagovailoa, what did they have here? 54.1 points per game. The man is completing better than 70% of his passes. 25 touchdowns. Not a single interception on the season. Let's go to number three on the list, Alabama. Why? Because what are you talking about? The meat and potato dudes. I'm talking about Jonah Williams, Lester Connor Sr., Ross, what is this, Ross? Perch Bacher, Alex <laughs> Leatherwood, Jedrick Wills Jr. They're the <laughs> offensive line of the Alabama Crimson Tide. All of them at least six feet four. All of them over 300 pounds. I'm talking meat and potatoes, everybody. <laughs> Let's go to number two on the list, Alabama. <laughs> Why? Because of the schedule. They're in the SEC. We know that's the number one conference in football. And still, they make everybody look like straight guards. You heard me, Ryan Clark. That means LSU, too. They will be the next with the next victims for the list. <laughs> and let's go to number one in the country, Alabama. <laughs> Why? Because, again, we get back to Nick Saban, regardless of their greatness, regardless of the national championship, regardless of everything they bring to the table. This man coaches like he's broke and starving and has never won a damn thing in his life. That's how he acts. He keeps them motivated, disciplined, focused, and that is my top five teams in the country. Alabama. There we go. Tough to argue with that list. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappoint you. <laughs> I don't disagree. I think that so many years we've talked about what Alabama had and mm -hmm. said, boy, if they get a special quarterback, there's nothing you can do with them. And I think Tua is beyond special. I, Dabo Sweeney said that Deshaun Watson was Michael Jordan. I really feel like this dude is Michael Jordan. When you watch him play, the accuracy he throws the ball with, I remember – Watching him in the second half of the national championship, and he threw that ugly interception. Mm -hmm. Nick Saban goes over to talk to him, and he puts his arm around him. A freshman, he puts his arm around him and said, I got it, coach. I knew then that this dude was different. But the people they stand across from on Saturday night are not scared. The dudes they're going to stand across from uh -huh. in Baton Rouge, in Death Valley, uh -huh. they want all Here's the, the smoke. Here's the problem. One of those dudes ain't going to be there in the first half. And it's don't, the don't best he, dude. Hey, can you, can, don't That's even so talk bogus. about that, too. That, it's that's the best. By the way, the reason I agree with this list, otherwise I'd say LSU has a chance. And, and I mean, all of a sudden, then you can start talking about other Clemson and whoever else. But if you're going to take their best player, maybe the second best player on the field, all pro, the, out of the game in the first half, and they're the underdogs anyway over a nonsense rule, then college football just ruined the college football season. They took any drama Absolutely. out of it. I agree with that. The only thing that I would say, and I like Tua, he's big time. I say I agree with everything you're saying about him. He's that big time. I want to ask you this one question as a football player, though. Don't you find him sometimes to be a bit transparent with where he's going with the football? Like, he's eyeing his target. He doesn't look you off and then throw in a different direction a lot of times. And I notice that because when I look at him, I know he's so good that I'm looking at him and I'm fantasizing about him on the next level. And I'm saying to myself, you got to look defenders off. You got to look those safeties off. You got to make sure... You don't be too transparent in where you're going with the football. Yeah, but when you got when you got when you got Judy and, and, and Smith and, and Waddle, the first option is often open. But there were times if you watch again, I remember watching Louisville and they went through his progression. He was one, two, three, and got the ball out and kind of compared it to what Jalen Hurts was doing and the difference and the advancement that this offense has taken with him. One. All these dudes are five stars, right? Like, all these wide receivers are five stars. This quarterback is so accurate, so on time, so on point. It, it's going to be fun to watch Christian Fulton, right, Greedy Williams, Grant Delpit, all these guys in the secondary are going to be pros. 
Two of them for sure are going to be top ten picks when they come out. We, we, I want to see what happens when the space is cut down. On we all Tuckabalo. see this the same way about Alabama. One thing I'll mention is Oklahoma. And I'll mention Lincoln Riley. And I'll mention the fact that they have one loss on the season. It was the Red River rivalry game by a field goal. There are other teams with interesting stories out there, at least, where by the time the national title game rolls around and Alabama will surely be in it, we will talk ourselves into, some of us, the idea that they can be upset. It not doesn't look guy. like it now, but it, by it, then it, we will. Not it's this a, guy, it's about, to bottom. It's about going Alabama. into that game thinking you can win it, though. The All players right. believe in that. Ryan, appreciate you and your wonderful insight. We will see and you next week. by the way, week. my pronunciation, because I usually say roll tie, but I say Alabama, because I just finished watching Forrest Gump the other day. <laughs>